Hey, how you doing, man? Good. Can I get a double scotch, please? Sure. You're the, uh, you're the comedian? Yeah, yeah. Getting a little, uh, courage before you go up, huh? Actually, it's for, uh, when I come off. Uh, makes the pride go down a little easier. <laughs> yeah. We're reviewing a movie that was actually made by my cohort, Mr. Kelly Monteith. I know tons of comedians, and, I, and it seems like everyone has a story. But the whole playing a comedian as a comedian, how did, how did that feel in, in your skin? You know? oh, wow. uh, man. What month is this? Wow, it actually says 2016. That's not good. <laughs> <laughs> anyway, 2016, not right, is it? No. Yeah. It could be. <laughs> hey, welcome back to Britflix. My name's Paul. <laughs> and I'm Kelly. And this is Two Buck Chuck, and he always helps us enjoy these movies just yes. a little bit more. But it's going down really sweet this time because we're reviewing a movie that was actually made by my cohort, Mr. Kelly Monteith. It's a movie called Too Hip for the Room. It's a fantastic movie, and it actually has a Brit connection, and that's it why does. it's on Brit Place. It does, yeah. I, at least I think. I, I had a show in Britain for uh, six years, and uh, the woman that plays, the, the actress that plays uh, my ex-wife in the film, Too Hip for the Room, is actually my ex-wife. I thought we were worth it. I guess we were really never enough for you, were we? And she's British. I met her. In the last year of shooting my show, in, uh, when we were on location in Lyndhurst, uh, in the New Forest area of uh, Britain. A beautiful area, by the way. I had the chance to see the movie last night, and uh, I can say at the outset, it's terrific. It's a terrific movie. It's a, it's a, it's a you know, we can say it to say it's a low-budget, independent oh, movie. Oh, God. Yeah, very uh, low-budget. And what you guys did is, is absolutely amazing and terrific. Um, I saw it. It's a, it's a download on Amazon.com right now. You were just nominated at the Burbank Film Festival for right. Best Picture, and yeah. you were nominated for Best Actor. Congratulations. I was. Thank you. Yes. Um, wow. And it's a, weird. It's a very cool honor. To yeah, have. it is. <laughs> for stand-up comic, it's, it's pretty kind of cool. But <laughs> When did it start? When did you get the idea? Of, you know? Well, actually, Octay came to me with the idea. I did a film called, um, which I'm still paying for, by the way, called A Lousy Ten Grand. Okay. I financed it myself, and, and we did it, and I, Octave was... Um, and that's still available in your trunk. It is, it is someplace. In, in the yeah, trunk of your car, In the right? trunk of my car, yeah. and I used I've, to, I've seen you around L.A. <laughs> selling them. <laughs> yeah, I still got them in my trunk, unfortunately. <laughs> um, I think it used to be on Netflix. I don't know if it still is, because it's been quite a while ago. But Octave was uh, my DP on that, my director of photography, and also basically kind of co-directed because yeah. I was kind and of new to And this is Octay Ortobasi? Or Ortobasi, yeah, Octay yeah. Ortobasi. Talented kid. Yeah. Very, yeah. very yeah. talented. And an unflappable guy. I mean, the, the, nothing can upset Octay. He's a great guy to be on a film set with because if something happens, he never panics. But during this, that shoot, he came to, I was telling him stories about being a stand-up and all the years that I've been doing it. And he came to me, he said, I want to do a movie about a stand-up comic that um, never quite got his shot. I don't know if he was thinking of me or what, <laughs> but he said, I'm going to do that. And I said, well, you know, yeah, okay. I don't know how many people are really interested in stand-up comedians and their stories and all that. Uh, we should probably uh, add some extra element to it. So we got together and we, we both co-wrote, I mean, we co-wrote it. And we came up with the, uh, the comedian in the film Too Hip for the Room has an autistic son that he has to provide for, obviously. You, you see what he's... Doing, he finds comfort in repetitive actions and sounds. But we feel if you give us a year, Patrick can be fair as a high functioning autistic. So he's still chasing his dream to get a series and to, you know, make it in, in Los Angeles or in the television industry. But he has to support the boy, yeah. you know, so he has to go on the road and, and work and it kind of kind of interrupts his dream. He's right. still chasing it, but it kind of puts it on hold. He has to take care of his family first. I would imagine anyone that knows you yeah. would think, oh, here's the next wacky comedy from Kelly Monty. <laughs> here's, here's the star yeah. of Screwball Hotel, right? Or That's what right. That? <laughs> Hollywood Boulevard 2 and, yeah. and yeah. Uh, Kelly Monty show and all that. Well, you know, it, it, in, in the beginning, one of my favorite parts of it is the uh, corporate date that he does. The first time you see him 10 years later after he sees him with the little kid is the corporate date, right? Yeah. Uh, which is probably a, a microchism of all the corporate dates I've done and other comedians have done, the horrible ones, the, the <laughs> dreadful ones that you never forget. 
uh, and I hope that comes across with the bartender that tells you the filthy jokes. Oh, maybe you can clean it up and use it. And you go, oh, yeah, right, okay. <laughs> and the guy that, you know, has the prayer before you come on that brings everybody down and, and uh, the guy that will give you the check right away and, and is resentful giving you the check. Uh, yeah. So and that was fun to do. Yeah. And I noticed too, because it's a, it's, it's a nice, it's a really nice story and storyline. But it, the other level for me is also the fact that your character of Jake um, also can't, uh, he's having a one-on-one -on -one problem with the son, you know, career aside. Yeah. You know, there, there's a, there's an underlying misunderstanding that toward, you know, towards the end kind of, uh, resolves itself. That, yeah. You know, things that he didn't realize that were going on within his son that he finds out in later scenes right. that actually make him feel better. Yeah. So he goes, well, we, I didn't realize we were having the relationship that we were having. You know, I did a little research on autism and there's very, all kinds of different levels of it. Right. And so you can kind of pick any one of those levels that this kid could be at. And some of them are antisocial. Some of the autistic kids just can't relate socially. And, and that's one of the aspects that he has when he has a, the girl that he likes, but he doesn't know how to handle those, know, those feelings and everything. Yeah. And it's the same thing when he was little that you didn't think he remembered stuff, but he did, and it affected him. Yeah. And it comes out later on, and the father sort of has a, uh, um, a connection with the boy for yeah. the first time. They helped me learn to, in, in, you know, yeah. Yeah. It just. I just. I don't know if I can swing it. And, and he did such a good job. Jake is his name. Obviously, he plays Patrick, the, the boy. He did a great job. He had worked with some autistic kids in New York, so he had a little insight about how, how it was. So let's go deeper into the story. Obviously, you're playing a comedian. I am. So that gets close. A washed up comedian. <laughs> People say, that's you. He said, no, 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 no. It's just a whole combination of a whole I bunch of I was going to ask you that. Do you fear or feel that uh, there is that perception of somebody going, oh, geez, poor, poor Kelly. <laughs> well, <laughs> there's got to be that a bit. I'm sure right. people think that. Well, and again, bit. I think it's the testament that the good job you do because you want people to believe yeah. what, what you're doing anyway. Yeah. But, we, uh, we, we but the thing is, you don't have, you know, joking aside, you don't have that. I've never, I've never made it. You, you know, uh, how many, how many Tonight Shows? How many Mervs? Yeah, uh, your own show on BBC, yeah. your own show on CBS. You know, that that's not someone that hasn't made it. This is you playing a character, but the whole playing a comedian as a comedian. How did, how did that feel in, in your skin? You know, well, the, you know, it's I, you know, we both work ships a lot, and yeah. I and I know tons of comedians, and I and it seems like everyone has a story. Oh, I was in L.A. and I, I got this series of the guy at the network really liked me and we got this series and it was all set to go. And then the guy at the network gets fired and a new guy comes in and wipes the slate clean of all the stuff that the other guy had. So now the comedian's out on the coal. Right. Now he has nothing. But, you know, Buzz, mm. and that show could have been yours. You know that too, don't you? Yeah, I know, I know. It's just... Uh... The show was still crap, you know, and it's not just me saying that. Nobody liked it. Yeah, except the public. Let's talk about um, uh, some of the people we're gonna we see in the movie because there's there's familiar faces that that all of a sudden pop up in this movie. Franklin and Jai, yeah. who I've known for tons of years, he lives in Australia now, but he he did it. And he's ter he's terrific at this. You buy him 100. percent Tony Russell, the guy that plays my friend in the film. God, Tony's been in Casino. Uh, he was in Bugsy. Uh, Greg Binkley, who plays that. Great uh, commercial audition guy <laughs> who I, I've been on tons of commercials as have you Absolutely. as have Greg. As Greg, who, yeah. Greg was he, Greg must have been channeling every every guy he's ever seen. <laughs> so he's great. Uh, Kip Kipadata. Kipadata plays uh, the guy that in, in one of the guys that's in there for the commercial interview. He, he yeah. does a, a really good yeah. job. The agent. Good friend of mine, Bob Duback. No, the auditions tomorrow, they start production the day after tomorrow. But Stuart, right. I need this corporate, man. My kid, I gotta... Jake, don't be a schmuck twice in your life. You can identify with this movie on so many different levels because one, if you're a parent, one of your parent of a special needs child. And you know, the whole thing about the son being autistic, um, it's, it's such a difficult, I can't imagine, it must be so hard for parents that have a special needs kid like that, son or daughter, either one. And I tried to point that up, um, the, the fact like the one scene in there when uh, Caroline plays my ex-wife that 
she says, well, what's going to happen to him when we're gone? You know, I mean, yeah. it's such got to be such a worry for, I mean, you worry about your kids enough. Speaking of family, uh, you get to work with some family. I did, film, I did, I did. I got down, my, ki my kids were on the plane in that little <laughs> scene. I always like to work with my family. The actress that plays my uh, ex-wife was my ex-wife, Caroline. How, how real are those scenes? Because you guys, <laughs> you guys play them very well. Okay, so what, as the, as the filmmaker, what's, what, what do you want the audience to take away from the movie? Well, um, I, I like them to take away the fact that uh, you never give up. I would like them to take that away from it. And also there's, there's comedic aspects to the film that I want them to enjoy as well. I think he kind of represents a lot of people who pursue a dream. So this is still all about the dream, isn't it? I, I don't even know what the dream is anymore. Why do you keep putting yourself through this over and over? To prove it was all worth it and get sidelined by reality yeah. that he has to take care of. And that's just as important. Yeah. You know, you have to take care of the, the people that you love. Where so, can we find it? Right now it's on Amazon streaming. I think you can get a, a DVD on Amazon, plus you can download it or you can just watch it for, I don't know, what, $1.99 yeah. or something like that. So, so. And, and there also is a DVD uh, that's yes. available. So I think as we, from time to time on Britflix like to do when we're talking about other people's movies, uh, we like to give stuff away. I think that's that's uh, what not in this case. Not in this case. <laughs> Nothing. No, no, definitely. <laughs> I will come to your home. Yeah. Uh, uh, Kelly will act out all the characters. I will come out and I will explain the whole film. Yeah. Do they have to supply the chuck? Do they? Oh yeah, yeah. definitely. Oh yeah. I, I don't. I don't. No yeah. wine. I don't come. How about if we do this for a contest? Is that if our if our friends out there go and either rent or download the movie? on Amazon, watch the movie, and then come back here to our video and leave a comment of your favorite scene or, or maybe even any any comment about the yeah. movie. And if you leave a comment here, we'll put it all in a hat. And why don't we say there'll be a couple, you know, we'll pull for a couple signed yeah. DVDs of the movie. From I'll get Kelly, as many people as I can to from sign. From the cast yeah, and from Octay the cast. and yeah. Yeah, Greg Definitely Binkley Octay and, and uh, Greg and uh, maybe Kip. So we've certainly enjoyed talking uh, to filmmaker Kelly Monteith, but I'd like to get back to my Britflix pal, Kelly. There we go. And tell you that, uh, you know, on behalf of the Britflix guys, we give two hip for the room, two checks out. Oh, that's great. Thank you very much. Yeah, well done. Oh, thank well you. Done. I appreciate that. I really do. Wow. Mm. Now, can I eat one of these? No, that's props. Oh, that's I'm sorry. Because I, I didn't no. want to eat one because I didn't want to spit out about talking and... Suddenly it got awkward. <laughs> <laughs> I did want to thank you, though. <laughs> I hope that comes across. Didn't. Maybe didn't. try that again.